Joyce and Moline. Woohoo! You do not meet a man but frowns. Our bloods no more obey the heavens, and our courtiers still seem as does the king. But what's the matter? His daughter and heir of kingdoms, who he proposed to his wife, a widow whom he lately married to her sole son, a thing too bad for bad report, hath preferred herself unto a poor but worthy gentleman, such as to seek through the regions of the earth to find one his like, one should find something lacking in him that would compare. She's wedded, her husband banished, oh. she imprisoned, all is outward sorrow. Though I think the king be touched it very hard. She has sold child to the king. He had uh, two sons some 20 years ago, the oldest of which at three years old, in swathing clothes lay the other. From their nursery were stolen. And to this hour, no guessing knowledge which way they went. We must forbear. Here comes the gentleman, the queen, and the princess. <laughs> No, be assured, dear daughter, you shall not find me after the slander of most stepmothers evil eyed unto you. For you, posthumous, so soon as I can win the offended king, I will be known your advocate. Please, your highness, I will from hence today. Yeah. You know the peril. I'll fetch a turn about the gardens, pitying the pangs of barred affections. Though the king hath charged, you should not speak together. Shh. <laughs> she wounds. You must be gone. My queen, my mistress, O oh lady, weep no more. I will remain the loyalist husband that did air the flight. Be brief. I ah! <laughs> if the king come, I shall incur I know not how much of his displeasure. So. Adieu. Look here, love. This diamond was my mother's. Take it, heart, but keep it till you woo another wife. When Imogen is Dead. How? How another? Remain. Remain thou here while sense cannot, can keep it on. And I have for you a jewel. I will place it upon you, my sweetest, fairest prisoner. Oh, the gods! When shall we see again? <laughs> Alack, the king! Thou disloyal thing! Thou art poison to my blood, hence avoid from my sight. <laughs> The gods protect you. I am gone. <laughs> there cannot be a pinch in death more sharp than this is. Oh, disloyal thing, thou shouldst repair my youth. Thou heaps a year's age on me. I beseech your grace, harm not yourself with your vexation. I am senseless to your wrath. Past grace, obedience. Past hope, and in despair that way, past grace. Oh, foolish thing. They were again together. Thou hast done not after our command. Away with her, pen her up. Oh, beseech your patience. Peace, lady daughter, peace. Ah, here comes your man. How now, Pisanio, what news? And madam, your son drew on my master. I trust no harm is done. There might have been, but that my master rather played than fought. <laughs> I'm very glad on it. Why came you from your master? On his command. He would not suffer me to bring him to the haven. Left these notes on what commands I should be subject to when it pleased you to employ me. <laughs> pray you walk alone. Oh, I, no, no. About some half hour hence, I pray you speak with me. For this time, leave me. <laughs> Have I hurt him? Nay, not so much as his patience. The fellow would not stand me. But he fled forward still. Toward your face. <laughs> and that she would love this fellow and refuse me. If it be a sin to make a true election, she is damned. <laughs> Come, all to my chamber. Would there had been some hurt done. I would thou grewest unto the shores of the haven and questions every sail. What was the last that he spake to thee? It was his queen, his queen. I would have broke mine eye strings till he had melted from the smallness of a gnat to air. But good Pisanio, when shall we hear from him? With his next vantage, I assure you. I did not yet take my leave of him, but had most pretty things to say. Ere I could tell him such thoughts and such... The queen, madam, desires your highness's company. Oh, those things I bid you do, get them dispatched. I will attend the queen. Madam, I shall.
key is to sojourn with you. How creeps acquaintance. His father and I were soldiers together. <laughs> to I have often been bound for no less than my life. <laughs> ah, here comes the Briton. Let him be so entertained among you as suits to a gentleman of your knowing to a stranger of his quality. Mm. <laughs> An argument fell out last night where each of us fell in praise of our country mistresses. One gentleman vouching his to be more fair and less attemptable than any of the rarest of our ladies. This lady is not now living, or this gentleman's opinion by this worn out. My lady holds her virtue still, and I my mind. Mm. You may hold her in title yours, but no strange foul light upon neighboring pawns. <laughs> Your Italy contains no such accomplished courtier that could convince the honor of my mistress. Uh, let us leave here, gentlemen. With five times so much conversation, I could get ground of your fair mistress. No. No. It came on too suddenly, gentlemen. Let it die as it was born, huh? Your lady, whom in constancy you think stands so safe, I lay 10,000 ducats to your ring that commend me to the court, and I will bring from thence that honor of hers which you imagine so reserved. I'll wage against your gold, gold to it. This ring I hold dear as my finger, tis part of it. I will but lend you my diamond until the wager is made. Let there be covenants drawn between. I don't think this Let is Let there be covenants. I want them. Please go we'll make them uh, right now. Way. The gods, it is one. If I can bring no sufficient testimony that I have enjoyed the dearest bodily part of your mistress, she, your jewel, this, your jewel, and my gold are yours, provided I have your commendation for my more free entertainment. I embrace these conditions. Your hand, a covenant, agreed. <laughs> now, Master Doctor, have you brought those drugs? Uh, I please, yet, your highness. Here they are, madam. <laughs> but I beseech your grace, without offense, my conscience bids me ask wherefore thou have commanded of me these most dangerous compounds, which are the movers of a languishing death, but those slow, deadly. <laughs> I wonder, doctor, thou asked me such a question. Is it not meet that I did amplify my judgment in other conclusions? Huh? I will use the forces of these thy compounds on creatures as we count not worth the hanging, <laughs> but none human. <laughs> so. <laughs> ah, here comes a clever rascal. <laughs> What news? Uh, doctor, thy service for this time is ended. Mark me a word. Hey, you. <laughs> I do not like her. <laughs> she just thinks she has strange lingering poisons, a drug of such damned nature. <laughs> Those she has will dull and stupefy the sense a while, but there is no harm in what show of death it makes. <laughs> no further service, doctor. I humbly take my leave. <laughs> <laughs> Whip she still, sayest thou. When thou shalt bring me word she loves my son, I'll tell thee on the instant that thou art as great as thy master greater. Could you hold that? <laughs> thou takest up, thou knowest not what. Oh, but take it for thy labor. Just bend your Take it for thy labor. It is a thing I made, that hath the king five times redeemed from death. Nay, I prithee, take it. <laughs> it is an earnest of a further good I mean to be. Tell thy mistress how the case stands with her. Do it as from thyself. I have given him that which if he takes shall quite unpeople her. <laughs> so, so, well done. Well done. <laughs> a father cruel and a stepdame false, a foolish suitor to a wedded lady that has her husband banished. <laughs> Madam, a gentleman from Rome comes from your lord with letters. Uh, uh, you're 
treats your highness dearly. <laughs> Thanks, good sir. You're kindly welcome. <laughs> All that is out of door most rich, and she be furnished with a mind so rare I have lost the wager. Boldness be my friend, arm me audacity from head to foot. <laughs> he is one of the noblest note to whose kindnesses I am most infinitely tied. Reflect upon him accordingly as you value your trust, Leonatus. <laughs> so far I read aloud, you're most welcome, kind sir. Thanks, madam. What, are men mad? What makes your admiration? <laughs> Sluttery. To such neat excellence a potion make desire vomit emptiness, not so allured to feed. <laughs> what? Dear sir, thus wraps you. Are you well? Thanks, madam. Well? Uh, continues well, my lord. His health beseech you. Exceeding pleasant. Never a stranger so merry and so gamesome. He is called the Britain Reveler. <laughs> When he was here, he did incline to sadness, and oft times not knowing why. I never saw him sad. There is a companion, it seems, much loves a Galan girl. She furnishes the thick sighs from him, whilst the jolly Briton, your lord, I mean, laughs from his free lungs, cries, oh, can my sides hold that man who knows what woman is? Nay, what she cannot choose but must be, will his free hours languish for assured bondage. Will my lord say so? I, with his eyes in flood with laughter, whilst I am born to wonder, I am born to pity too. I pray you, sir, deliver with more openness your answers to my demands. Why do you pity me? That others do. What? I was about to say, enjoy your... But is it, it is an office of the gods to venge it, not mine to speak on it. You do seem to know something of me or what concerns me. Discover to me at once what both your spurn and stop. Had I this cheek to bathe my lips upon, Good. this hand whose touch, <laughs> whose every touch would force a feeler's soul to oath of loyalty, should I not damned then join grips with hands made hard with hourly falsehood? So that all the plagues of hell should at some time encounter such revolt. <laughs> My lord, I fear hath forgotten Britain. Ooh, lady, your cause doth strike my heart with pity, which doth make me sick. Be revenge. Revenge? If this be true, how should I be revenged? Whilst he's vaulting variable ramps? Revenge it. I dedicate myself to your sweet pleasure. <laughs> My service tender on your lips. Away! I do condemn mine ears that have so long attended thee. Thou robs the gentleman who is as far from thy report as thou from honor, and solicits here a lady that disdains both thee and devil alike. What ho, Pisanio! Oh, happy Leonidas! The credit thy lady hath of thee deserves thy trust, and thy most perfect goodness her assured credit. Pray, your pardon. I spoke this to know if your affiance were deeply rooted. You make amends. He sits amongst men like a descended god. He has a kind of humor, sense of off, which cannot err. The love I bear him made me fan you thus, but the gods made you unlike all others. Shaftless, pray your pardon. <laughs> All's well, sir. Thanks, madam. I had but forgot to entreat you in a small request. Some dozen Romans and your lord, the best feather of our wing, have mingled sums to buy a present for the emperor. Will it please you to take them in protection? Willingly, and pawn mine honor for their safety, since my lord hath interest in them. I will keep them in my bed chamber. <laughs> they are in a trunk, attended by my men. I will make bold to send them to you only for this night. I must abroad tomorrow. If you please to greet your lord with writing, do it tonight. I have outstood my time. I will write. <laughs> Trunk to me, it shall safe be kept and truly yielded you. You're very welcome, sir. Was there ever a man that had such luck? I am not vexed by anything else on earth. A pox on it. Because of the queen, my mother, no one will fight me. I would rather not be so noble as I am. Every jack slave hath his belly full of fighting, and I must go up and down like a cock that no one can match. Did you hear of a stranger that's come to court tonight? A stranger? Mm. And I know not on it. 
to that an Italian has come and one of Leonardus's his friends. Leonardus! What? A banished rascal, and he's another whatsoever he be! Come, out to my chamber. What I've lost off the balls today, I will win off him tonight! <laughs> That such a crafty devil as his mother should yield the world this ass. To your protection, I commend me, gods, from fairies and tempters of the night. Guard me. about her body above 10,000 meaner movables would testify to enrich mine inventory. Come up. Come up. Tis mine. And this will witness outwardly as dearly as the conscience does within to the maddening of her lord. On her left breast, a mole, sink spotted. This secret will force him think I have picked the lock. Contain the treasure of her honor. I have enough. To the trunk again and shut the spring of it. Swift, swift, you dragons of the night, so that dawning may bear the raven's eye. I lodge in fear, though this a heavenly angel. Hell is here. If I could get this foolish image, and I would have gold enough. Tis almost morning, tis it not? I would this music would come. I am advised to give her music a morning. They say it will penetrate. Nobody likes that one. Come on, tune! We'll try to finger with, we'll penetrate with fingering. We'll try with tongue as well. Okay. No one ever likes that one. I think. Trouble. The thanks I give is telling you that I am poor. 
rather you felt than make me both. You sin against obedience, which you owe your father for the contract you pretend with the base wretch. Profane fellow, his meanest garment that ever hath but clipped his body is dearer in my respects than all the hairs Whoa. of the body where they all make such men. What hell, Cassania? His meanest garment, now the devil I Go bid my woman search for a jewel that too casually hath left mine arm last night. Will not be lost. I hope so. Go and search. You have abused me. His meanest garment? I, I said so, sir. I will inform your father. Oh, your mother, too. Oh, she's my good lady and will conceive, I hope, but the worst of me. So I leave you, sir, to your worst of discontent. I'll be revenge. His meanest garment. Well, <laughs> with this, your king hath heard of the great Augustus. Uh, I think he'll grant the tribute, huh? I believe this will prove a war. <laughs> <gasps> See, Yakima! Hey! I hope the briefness of your answer made for the speediness of your return. Eh? Your lady is one of the fairest that I have looked upon. And they're with all the best. <laughs> Letters for you, sir. Their tenor good, I trust. Tis very like. Ah, all's well yet. Sparkles the stone as it was wont. If I had lost it, I would have lost the worth of it in gold. The stone's too hard to come by. Not a whit. Your lady being so easy. Oh, sir. <laughs> Make not, sir, your loss your sport. I now profess myself the winner of her honor, together with your ring. Proceed. First, her chamber, where I confess I slept not, but had that which was well worth watching. It was hung with tapestry of silk and silver, so bravely done, so rich. This is true, but you could have heard it here by me or by some other. The chimney is self the chamber, the chimney piece, chaste Diane bathing. <laughs> this is her honor. Be that you have seen these things, and praise be to your remembrance. But what lies in her chamber, nothing proves the wager that you have laid. Then be pale, and give me but leave to air this jewel. Joe, let me look on it again. Is that what I once gave to her? She stripped it from her arm. Her pretty action did outsell her gift and yet enriched it too. She gave it me and said she prized it. Once. Maybe. Uh, she plucked it off to send to me. She writes so to you, doth she? Oh. <laughs> no. 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 Tis true. Here, take this too. It is a basket. hunger to feed again, though full. You do remember the stain upon her. I, <laughs> I, and it doth prove another stain. One so big, hell couldn't hold, were there no more but it. Wilt thou hear more, my lord? Oh, that I had her here to tear her limb meal. I will go, and I will do it in front of her father. I'll do it in front of the court. I'll go. Do something. Let us after him to pervert the to pervert the present wrath he hath against himself with all my heart. Can men be but women? Must be half workers? Vengeance. 
Can I find the woman's part in me? For there is no motion that tends to vice in man, albeit the woman's. Lying, Margaret, hers. Deceiving, hers. Flattery, hers. Lust and rank thoughts, hers. Hers, revenge is hers. All sins that hell can hold, hers. In part or all, but rather all. was in this Britain, and conquered it, passably in thine uncle granted Rome a tribute, yearly three thousand pound, which by thee lately is left untendered. <laughs> and to kill the marvel shall be so ever. There may be many Caesars, ere such another Julius. Britain is a world unto itself, and we will nothing pay for wearing our own noses. You must know, till the injurious Romans did extort this tribute, we were free. I am sorry, Cymbeline, to pronounce Augustus Caesar thine enemy. War and confusion pronounce I against thee. His majesty bids you welcome. So, sir. I know your master's pleasure, and he mine. Adultery. A worthy Leonatus, what strange infection has fallen in thine ear? Disloyal. No. That I should murder her? If it be so to do good service, let me never be counted serviceable. Do it. By the letters that I have sent her on her own command, she'll give the opportunity. Lo, oh, here she comes, and I am ignorant to what I am commanded. How now, Pisanya? <laughs>
please you read, and you will find me, wretched man, a thing most disdained of fortune. My mistress, Bassanio, hath played the strumpet in my bed. I know this not out of weak surmises, but out of proof as strong as my grief and as certain as I exact my revenge. Let thine own hands take away her life. I shall give thee opportunity at Milford Haven. What need I draw the blade? The paper hath cut her throat already. False to his bed. Alas, good lady. I false. Hear me with patience. Oh, come, fellow, be thou honest. Do thou thy master's bidding. When thou seest him, let a witness my obedience. Look, I draw the sword myself. Um, Take it and hit the innocent mansion okay. of my love. Okay. My heart, okay. fear not. Tis empty of all things but grief. <laughs> Do his bidding. Strike. Madam, hear me. Oh, talk thy tongue weary. Speak. <laughs> it cannot be but that my master is abused. I will write to him that you are dead and send him some bloody sign of it, for tis commanded. You shall be Mr. Court, and that will well confirm it. Why, fellow? What shall I do the where? Where bide? How live? For in life what comfort when I am dead to my husband? <laughs> um, the ambassador, Lucius the Roman, comes to Milford Haven tomorrow. If you could wear a mind as dark as your fortune is, and tread a course pretty and full of you, nay, haply, near the residence of Posthumus, so nigh at least that, though his actions were not visible, report should render him hourly to your ear as dearly as he moves. Oh, for such means, I would adventure. Well, here's the point. You must forget to be a woman. Change into a waggish courage, ready and give. Nay, be brief. I see into the end, and I'm almost a man already. First you must become but like one. For thinking this, tis in my bag. Um, doublet, hat, hose, all that become them. Would you, in their service, for noble Lucius, present yourself, desire his company? Doubtless with joy he will embrace you, for he is honorable. Thou art all the comfort the gods diet me with. Prithee, away! <laughs> we must make short farewell, lest I being suspected of your carriage from the court. Oh, uh, here is a box. I had it from the queen. What's in it is precious, and to be sick at sea or stomach palmed at land, a dram of this will drive away to temper. Some fade and fit you to your manhood. May the gods direct you to the best. Amen. I thank thee. Caius hath wrote already to the emperor how it goes here. It fits us therefore rightly, our horsemen and our chariots be in readiness. Tis not sleepy business, and must be looked to speedily and strongly. Our gentle queen, where is our daughter? She hath not appeared before the Roman, nor to us hath tendered the duty of the day. Call her before us. Royal sir, since the exile of Posthumus, most retired hath her life been. My lord, when last I went to see her, she prayed me excuse her keeping clothes. So, <laughs> my son. Go after the king. Go. That servant of hers, Pisanio, has not seen these two days. <laughs> Go look after him. <laughs> Pisanio, he hath a drug of mine. I pray his absence proceed by swallowing that, for he believes it to be a most precious thing. <laughs> but what of her? Where is she gone? Happily despair has seized her. <laughs> Ah, oh, how now, my son? Tis certain she is fled. Go and cheer the king, he rages. All the better. May this night forestall him of the coming day. <laughs> oh, Imogen. I love and hate her, for she hath all the courtly parts more exquisite than lady, <laughs> ladies, woman. So I love her, therefore, but refusing me and throwing favors on that low posthumous, what? So slanders her judgment, then what's else rare is choked. So I will hate her, therefore, nay, be revenged upon her. For when fools shall... <gasps> Who's there? What are you packing? Sarah, precious pander, where is thy lady? In a word, or thou art straight away with the beams. Oh, my good lord. <laughs> where is thy mistress? Is she with posthumous? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why should she be with him? 
England. Was she this? He's in Rome. Where is she, sir? Come nearer. Yeah, come here. My all-worthy lord. Oh, my all-worthy villain! Discover where thy mistress is at once! Here, sir, is the history of my knowledge touching her flight. Let's see it. She's far enough. And what he learns by this may prove his travel and not her danger. Ah. I'll write to my lord that she is dead. <laughs> oh, Imogen, safe mayest thou wander, safe return again. Sarah, is this letter true? Sir, as I think. Wilt thou serve me? My lord, I will. Mm. The first service I will ask of thee is bring any garments you may have of your master, Heather. Meet thee at Milford Haven. Even there, posthumous. What? I will kill thee. Imogen once said that she held the very garment of posthumous in more respect than my noble and natural person and the adornment of all of my qualities. With that suit on my back, I will ravish her. First, kill him, and she shall see the valor in her eyes, and with my speed of insultment handed on his dead body, uh, back to the court I will foot her, kick her back to her father. She has hated me rejoicingly, and I will be merry in my revenge. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> be those the garments? Aye, my lord. How long she went to Milford Haven? She can scarce be there yet. The second service I will ask of thee, bring those garments to my chamber. And the third, of course, will be a voluntary mute to my design. Is it key, you am? Speak it. 
Pray, draw near. Thanks, good sir. Pray you, draw near. <laughs> I'm near to the place where they should meet. How fit his garments suit me. <laughs>
the legions garrisoned in Gallia, attending you here at Milford Haven. Bear at your readiness. What's here? A trunk without a top? How a page. Gentle youth, inform us of thy fortunes, for it seems they crave to be demanded. Who is it thou makest thy bloody pillow? What art thou? I am nothing. <laughs> My name? Fidoe, sir. <laughs> Thou dost approve thyself the very same. Thy name well fits thy faith, thy faith thy name. Will take thy chance with me? I'll follow, sir. I got him. Oh, really? Yeah. of her son, a madness from which her life's in danger. Oh, Imogen, the great part of my comfort gone. But for thee, fellow, who needs must know of her departure, and does seem so ignorant, will enforce it from thee with sharp torture. Ah, my lord, my life is yours. I, lady, will, but... For my lady, I nothing know where she remains. Uh, my lord, uh, the Roman legions have landed on your coast. Well, let's withdraw. We we fear not what can stop it. What can from Italy annoy us? <laughs> <laughs> Yea, bloody cloth, I'll keep thee. For I wish thou shouldst be colored thus. Oh, Pisanio, every good servant does not all commands. Oh, the noise is round about us. Let us from it. What joy have we in life to shield us from action and adventure? Nay, what hope have we in hiding us? Higher, to the mountain, boys, there, secure us. By the sun that shines, all thither. By the heavens, I'll go. So say I, amen.
A Roman. Lay hands on him! A dog! <laughs> Stand by our side, ye whom the gods have made preservers of our throne. Woe oh, is my heart, for the poor soldier that so richly fought could not be found. I never saw so noble fury and so poor a thing. Tis time to say from whence ye are. Report it. Sir, in Cambria are we born. And gentlemen, further to boast, we are honest. Bow your knees. I will fit you with dignities becoming your estates. There's business in these faces. Why so sadly greet you a victory? Oh, to sour your happiness, great king, I must report. The queen is dead. How oh, ended she? Oh, with horror, madly dying like her life. What she report, I, what she confessed, I will report, so please you. Brithy, say. Well, first she confessed she never loved you. <laughs> Married your royalty, was wife to your place, aboard your person. Proceed. Your daughter, she confessed, was as a scorpion to her sight. Oh, most delicate fiend. Is there more? Oh, oh, more, sir, and worse. Oh. Mine eyes were not at fault, for she was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thou comest not, Caius, for tribute now, though with the loss, think of your estate. Consider, sir, the chance of war. Mm. But since the gods will have it thus, this one thing only will I entreat. My boy, a Briton born, let him be ransomed. He hath done no Briton harm, though he hath served a Roman. Save him, sir. What wouldst thou, boy? What's thy name? Fidele, sir. Thou art my good youth, my page. I'll be thy master. Walk with me, speak freely. Is not this boy revived from death? One sand another no more resembles that sweet rosy lad who died and was Fidele. Mm. Oh, peace, peace, see further. Stand thou by our side, make thy demand aloud. <clears throat> My boon is that mm. this gentleman may render of whom he hath this ring. What's that to him? By villainy, I got this ring. Ooh. Twas Leonidas's jewel, whom thou did banish. Mm -hmm. Wilt thou hear more, my lord? All that belongs to this. Your daughter's chastity. <laughs> there it begins. Uh, he spake of her as Diane, for an eye wretch made scruple of his praise and wagered with him in suit the place of his bed by hers and mine adultery. Away to Britain post I in this design. Well may you remember me at court where I was taught of your chaste daughter, the wide difference twixt amorous and villainous. I returned with similar proof enough with tokens that thus and thus. Ah, this, her bracelet, <laughs> nay, some notes of secret about her person, which he could not think her bond of chastity quite cracked. Italian fiend! Oh, give me cord or knife or poison or some upright justice or thou, king, send out for torturers and genius. I am posthumous. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
dead. Oh. Oh, uh, I'm sorry for it, my lord. Oh, she was not. But her son is gone. We know not how nor where. My lord, Lord Clotten came to me with his sword drawn and said, if I discovered not which way my lady was gone, it was my instant death. What came of him hereafter, I know not. Oh, and the story. I slew him there. Oh, I am so merry the gods forfend. I would not thy good deed should from thy lips pluck a hard sentence. I spoke it and I did it. Oh. He was a prince. A most uncivil one. I cut off his head. No, that's not. I am sorry <laughs> for this. By thine own tongue thou art condemned and must endure our law. Thou art dead. Say, Sir King, this man is better than the man he slew as well descended as thyself. How of descent as good as we? I am too blunt and saucy. Here's my knee. These two gentlemen that call me father and think they are my son are none of mine. They are the issue of thy loins, my liege. How? My issue? These two gentle princes, for such and so they are, these twenty years have I trained up. And those arts they have as I could put into them, beaten for loyalty, excited me to treason. But gracious sir, here are your sons again, and I must lose two of the sweetest companions in the world. Thou weepst and speakst, I thought I lost my children, if these be they. I could not wish a pair of worthier sons. Oh, what am I, a mother to the birth of three? Oh, Imogen, thou hast lost by this a kingdom. Oh, my lord, I've got two worlds by it. Pardon, Thor, to all. 